start with Connect Four then. Um, it was a glorified version of the tic tac toe in, in a few ways, and I, I might actually just uh, quickly bring up the tic tac toe one first, um, which I don't know if you saw. That was in your session, Liana. That was between Neil and Alana. So, um, and I'll just touch on that for a minute because it'll lead us into the Connect Four. Um, so let me pull it up. Okay, I'll share my screen. Okay, so um, I won't go into everything I did here, but at the the number that you've got in the tic-tac-toe, eight different possible ways someone can win. You know, they can make three horizontal ways. Um, I'm just playing with this first board over here at the moment. Three vertical ways and then two diagonal ways. Um, and so, because it's pretty short, I could actually put all of that in in sort of one formula here. And this is just an OR function with eight arguments inside. Um, that's one of the horizontal ways. That's one of the horizontal ways. That's one of the horizontal ways. The next three are the vertical ways. Um, and they were just all using CANIFs. And then for the diagonals, I just basically used an AND function and looked at three conditions within the AND function simultaneously. And if all three of those conditions are met, in this case, if it's, you know, D15, so this is the top left to bottom right diagonal, E16 and F17, then that returns true and that will contribute to the whole OR function returning true. So that, you know, at a simplified level was how I would approach it. And the Connect4 was more or less the same. Um, the difference is in Connect4, instead of having eight different ways to make, you know, three in a row, you've got 69 different ways to make four in a row, of which uh, those 64 are spread across, 69, sorry, are spread across um, spread across horizontal, vertical, and, and diagonal ways. Um, I don't want to write an OR function with 69 arguments inside. Um, 24 of those 69 are diagonals, and I don't want to have 24 AND functions inside my OR function with each AND function having four terms. So um, the way I approached this was, and the very first time I had the idea for this question, I solved it a, a, a very different way. Um, I solved it similar to how Willem was solving it, which was trying to get a, a representation of the board after move one, and then test to see if anybody has won yet. And then get a representation of the board after move two, and test if anyone's won yet. And did that 42 times. And, and so you would have 42 uh, little arrays of a six by seven block of cells, and you're testing in each of those 42 boards, has somebody won yet? Uh, and look, it works, but it's it's a lot of it's a lot of typing, it's a lot of copy pasting, it's a lot of worksheet cells. Um, it's probably a data table to do it efficiently, and then it's hard to combine that with doing it over multiple boards. Um, this time, when I, I solved it, I had a different idea, which was I, first I built up a representation of the final board, and that's what you're seeing here. I, I've just got a little. Uh, variable input here where I can enter the game number, so between one and 10. So if I enter game eight, it's that, game one is this. So that's a representation of the board with just reds being ones and yellows being twos, just put conditional formatting there. That alone doesn't let you answer the question though, because you can see there's a four in a row for yellow, but there's also a four in a row for red. And then there's a four in a row for yellow and another four in a row for yellow and up here. And you need to know out of all those possible four in a rows for red and yellow, which one came first, because that will be the one that determined the winner of the game. And that would also be the one that gives you the other information you need to answer. So the way I went about this um, adjacent to that, I've got here the board with the numbers one through 42 being the sequence that each piece was placed. And so this here is the number one, um, that is the first piece that was placed. And then number two, 
was you know, the second piece that was placed and so on and so on all the way up into number 42 is the last piece that was placed. How I got that, um, it, it's actually just very few simple formulas. This is the numbers one through 42. This is a breakdown of the piece sequence where I've just stripped out using the mid function, stripped out the commas and spread it over 42 cells. And that tells me the column. And then the row is just to count ifs on, you know, how many times has that column number previously occurred. It tells me sort of what row the piece is gonna go in. Um, and then this is just summing up, you know, the move number one through 42 against, does it match this row and this column? And, and that's how I got that. So now that we're there, I said, well, I can use this picture of the board to test all of the verticals, horizontals, and diagonals. And so here you can see I'm doing a count if are these four cells all equal to one, in which case, well, sorry, if, uh, are the count of those four cells being equal to one equal to four, which yeah, is equivalent to all those four cells are equal to one. And if that's true, I want to take the maximum value of those four cells um, because the maximum value of these four cells would tell me the piece number that completed the four in a row that I had here. Um, and if not, if you know the value of false case is just 99 or anything bigger than 42 would have done that. And so doing that for player one across the uh, 18, sorry, 21 possible vertical ways to win, and this can just be dragged down and across. Oops. Doing the same for the uh, 24 different horizontal ways to win. So you can see here, uh, this one in particular is a winner because we've got all four ones there. So it'll look and it'll say, well, that was completed with the third, seventh, seventh, eighth, and 27th move. 27 is the largest, so it was the 27th. Um, piece in the board that completed that and doing it again then for player two it's the same formulas just replacing the one in the count if with a two and then the diagonals and the diagonals were a little bit trickier because there's 24 diagonals um, and so actually rather than trying to use a, a, a count if function you could use the same approach but it's harder to get something to drag across and down um, and you wouldn't use a count if you would have to use like an and with four arguments in it. So I actually broke up this here and these, it was a bit of a sort of manual typing and then copying and pasting, but I've got a list of all the 24 possible diagonals. The numbers you're seeing are the piece numbers on the board, but what's important here is the cell references. So the first diagonal is the cell reference C10, D9, E8, and F7, which you know, corresponded to uh, C10, D9, E8, and F7. So it was those four cells. And so I've just got a formula here to return on the left-hand board kind of those numbers. And then I can just copy and paste those over here to get K10, L9, M8, and N7, which gives me the equivalent of these four numbers. And so it's just, sorry, I'm trying to make those blue, but the conditional formatting is overriding me. Um, but it's, it's those ones, I'll make them bold, I can do that. Um, and then once I've got that, I can then take the same approach that I was using with the horizontal and vertical checks and just drag it straight down and do one check for player one, one check for player two. So the only difference is what is in your count if function when you're searching over here. And so I just had to set that up once. And you can see here, once I've set that up, I can obviously drag that down twice. And so I've done that. These are all the same formula, just all the same block of formulas dragged down. Then I just had to shift it over one to the right um, and drag it down to get the next three and then the next three and then the next three. And then I just had to basically do the same in reverse going from top left to bottom right for all 12 possible diagonals. So uh, a little bit of time to set that up, but then once I, I'd done that, um, 
I could take the same broad approach. And, and then to finish off that approach, in case you can't see where it's going, across each player one, player two, vertical, horizontal, diagonal block, I've essentially got you know six easy to search ranges here. That's player one vertical, player one horizontal, player two vertical, player two horizontal, player one diagonals, and player two diagonals. And I'm just looking for the minimum number in any of those. Um, and then the minimum overall of all of those. And that tells me who won the game first. And we can see here for game one, it tells me player two on the 22nd move made their first four in a row and it just happened to be a horizontal. Player one made their first four in a row on the 27th move. Player two comes first. And then I can take that move 22 and look up here, you know, move 22 corresponded to column one and row one um, in order for me to, you know, and, and then row one becomes, you know, row A because we need to convert one through six to A through F to answer the question. And then there's sort of my live answers for, for the game. Um, and the yellow or red is simply determined by is this number even or odd? You know, if it's odd, red one, if it's even, yellow one. Um, or you could just look at which one of these was, was lower. Uh, and so that's how I got the live game answers. And I said it was all triggered by this one cell, the games one through 10. And then a quick data table, um, searching that through one through 10 gave all of the answers for part eight of the game. Um, so that was the long winded answer of how I approached the diagonals. <laughs>